Hi, I'm Hannah, and I am going to be sharing with you a lesson that I created for language arts for first grade, and it's talking about sequencing for the Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. It's one of my favorite books that I read when I was younger. Um, and so focusing on this lesson, what will happen is we'll read the book together as a class, and here's the book for you, and it's in Spanish. I want to be an ESL teacher, so I actually have this book and own it in Spanish for my students. So it, it has the same pictures, but the same kind of concept, but just in Spanish and not English. So in this book, so it starts off with um, a little egg as the caterpillar. So here he's the little egg. And then from the egg, he becomes a caterpillar that's crawling here on the bottom and the sun is out. And then he eats all this food, eats some more food, becomes a really, really fat caterpillar right here in this picture. And then he becomes a chrysalis or a cocoon. And then from there, he becomes a beautiful butterfly. Um, and so as you're reading this book with your first grade students, so a lot of it is focusing on sequencing and so helping them to understand what comes first, what comes second, third, fourth. Um, and so in this case, as the teacher, you would probably um, prepare sentence strips already for them that had First it was they're laying an egg, then it becomes a caterpillar, then they eat food, then it's a cocoon, and then it becomes a butterfly. And from those, the students, then for the assessment later on, they would use those to create a picture with them and put them in order, and then you would see if they're understanding the concept of sequencing and what that means. Um, and then for a homework or a takeaway would be to have them come back to class the next day with a list of what they do in, for their morning routine and sequence that. So you start by waking up. You don't come to school first. And so really establishing what sequencing means and making sure that things are happening in order. So along with this lesson, I also, so after you read the book, then there's a super fun song that goes along with it, and it's called the Butterfly Song, it figures, um, but I'll just sing a little part of it, and with it are hand motions, so it starts with like clasping your thumbs together and creating a butterfly, so it's to the, to the tune of Up on the Housetop for like a Christmas song, but it goes, first comes the butterfly who lays an egg, out comes a caterpillar with many legs. Oh, see the caterpillar spin and spin, a little chrysalis to sleep in. Oh, 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 look and see. Oh, 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 look and see. Out of the chrysalis, my, oh, my, here comes a beautiful butterfly. So with that song, you can incorporate it with your students after they're done reading the book. Um, and then you can kind of play that throughout. And that's just really to solidify the sequencing of this is what happens first, and then this comes, and then the butterfly comes. So really working with the cycle of a monarch butterfly. Um, and also with that, I had an art lesson that goes along with it where you take an old sock and you put little pom-poms for the eyes and a pom-pom for the, um, the mouth. And then it's a little caterpillar that the students can use with their hands. Um, and then inside, you can make a butterfly out of felt, and then you'll flip it um, when it comes to the part after they're the caterpillar, and then they become the butterfly. So those are just the parts and the aspects that I did for my lesson. Hopefully, it inspires you guys to continue to use books um, and then incorporate music into them. Thank you so much for listening.